than a researcher, a lead researcher, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, of randomized controlled trials on yes. Kava. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Which, yeah? Would you tell us a bit about those studies that you've done? Sure. Well, gosh, to date, there's been, well, there's, there's been sort of about a dozen publications, I think, in the area, you know, several randomized controlled trials, uh, of which obviously we're double blinded. So we've done very good quality science, um, you know, at very good universities, exploring the use of CARBA versus placebo, and primarily in people with anxiety or generalized anxiety disorder. And to give you, I guess, a sort of a bit of a, a, a take home message in regards to the nuts and bolts of our findings, um, the general scope of our research has shown that, yes, uh, compared to placebo or a dummy pill, CARVA is effective in reducing anxiety, but more so in people who have, I suppose you'd say, non chronic or non uh, serious uh, clinical anxiety. So the breadth of studies of ours and other people's have shown that, uh, yeah, CARVA obviously does elicit a anxiety reducing effect, but when you're talking about people who do have chronic clinical anxiety, um, that it may not be as effective uh, potentially as, as some other interventions. Mm. And if someone who doesn't have chronic clinical anxiety, will, if they use CAVA, will they have only acutely anxiolytic effects or will CAVA reduce their anxiety chronically as well? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, look, what we do know about CARVA, which is nice to at least have some reasonable sense of certainty about, is that for most people, and of course there are always individual personality and genetic differences, um, but for most people they will get an anxiety-reducing effect. They might get muscle relaxation, uh, you know, as, as well as um, potential mood effects from having CARVA. If they've got, you know, general sense of stress, anxiety, usually, you know, but certainly based on the evidence uh, that it, it, it does indicate that it does have a, a beneficial effect uh, on reducing stress and anxiety. Um, it, it, is, it has got a different profile, obviously, than alcohol, and it is non-alcoholic. Um, but as we know, for most people, not everybody, most people, you have a couple of drinks, takes the edge off, you're a bit more chilled. In the same way, you can argue Carver does that. The only difference is that um, it, it tends not to have uh, a negative effect on cognition, you know, which I guess gives it a, a good profile uh, compared to um, safety profile compared to alcohol in that respect. Um, so for people, yes, I mean, certainly acutely, if they're stressed, they're anxious, that may be of benefit to them to reduce their anxiety. I guess what we're talking about is some of our research uh, has looked at seeing if this could be a gold standard treatment for generalized anxiety disorder, which is, you know, it's a diagnosed psych uh, psychiatric disorder. Uh, in a sense, you know, like somebody would be diagnosed with major depressive disorder. Now, our initial study showed that, yes, there was a, a mild signal that it, in a small sample that it may potentially be beneficial in this sample. We conducted recently a much larger multi-site study uh, and unfortunately, the results of that showed that no, it was not um, more effective than placebo. So for some people, look, it may be of benefit and it might be, for example, a dosage issue. Maybe for some people, they do need a, a bit more of it. It could be the type of carver used. Um, you know, it could vary on a, on a case by case basis. However, um, the breadth of evidence, including our evidence and other people's, uh, tends to support um, that yes, in potentially healthy people or generally stressed or anxious people, um, it you know will most likely have a, a, a beneficial anxiety reducing effect. However, as a actual gold standard standard medical treatment for generalized anxiety disorder, that there is not strong evidentiary support. Right, and in my understanding, clinicians often prescribe. For example, then in the case of major depressive uh, disorder patients, many different antidepressants anti until they find the one that works. And 
that mm. seems a bit would would you say that's a, an accurate description of how it works start well, with? well i guess in regards to you know what is one person's panacea is another person's poison uh and certainly i'm not right. saying this is going to be anybody's poison uh, but, but i guess what i am saying is you know every different biological interventions work you know better or worse for for the individual you know, based on many different yeah. aspects um and obviously their individual needs so it really does depend i guess on a case-by-case -case basis but what we can do looking at the clinical trial evidence and say that look for certain people, it may be absolutely wonderful. For other people, it may not be their their cup of tea. And and um, you know, we just obviously advise people in an ideal setting to have uh, you know health professional support to work out whether something like Carver is right for them. Um, conversely, look, they may say, look, you know, they use it more recreationally. They love Carver. They might have you know a couple of bowls, uh, you know, of Carver as something which is just part of their relaxation routine. You know, I think that's also a, a real positive. Um, you know, let's be honest. I mean, anything we can do, I think, as a society to reduce our alcohol consumption is probably a pretty smart thing. So um, yeah. for, for some people, yeah, that may be a, 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 an alcohol alternative. Yeah, especially if it has cognitive enhancing effects. Uh, yeah, I mean, has... yeah. Yeah, that's as uh, an yeah. indirect result of reducing anxiety and stress. Uh, yeah, no, that, and you bring up an interesting point there. I mean, our, our research has shown we've we've done a comparison between a benzodiazepine and carva uh, and placebo in, in in a sort of acute use, and it showed yeah there was no deleterious or negative effects uh, on cognitive uh, domains on cognitive function mm -hmm. by taking the carva acutely. Um, so that's a, a positive uh, in respect to that compared to something like uh, alcohol. Whereas uh, with that particular study, the benzo, which is the oxazepam, uh, we did a driving simulated test and it was found that it reduced break time, um, you know, so it slows reactions. Whereas the carba mm. used at a therapeutic level shouldn't uh, dampen reactions. Now, of course, if people use carva in a traditional sense and they're, having you know 10 20 bowls of carba well look let's be blunt about it there unfortunately has not been the research done uh yeah. to take a look at, to see what sort of effects we're going to get on cognition and on motor skills at those sort of levels yeah. uh anecdotally anecdotally from what i understand is certainly it makes people uh you know quite chilled quite uh, in some cases um you know, physically sedated, and and I think is a possibility it may affect, uh, you know, reaction time and motor skills. But at a therapeutic, uh, general low recreational use, carva should be, you know, absolutely fine um, in terms of you know it not affecting motor skills and cognitive skills. And in fact, to your point, which I think is a great point, um, for some people, if they have their anxiety levels and their stress levels reduced, they can concentrate better. And you have the added benefit with carver is that it uh, some some uh, preclinical research has shown that it increases uh, um, the uh, reuptake inhibition of noradrenaline uh, in the prefrontal mm -hmm. cortex. Uh, um, so based on that, uh, look, there is the potential that 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 actually may have an effect on focusing the mind, which which can obviously right. be a positive. 